Hardtail mountain bikes are a logical choice for bikepacking adventures due to their versatile geometry, efficiency on rough terrain, and ample cargo carrying capabilities. They also double as reliable trail bikes. The Esker Jaffe embodies all of these qualities, and over the last couple of months, I've put this thing through its paces, both on day rides and demanding bikepacking trips. Let's get into it. Before we dive into the review, I just want to share that this video is supported in part by Terravel Tires. The Sparwood is Terravel's mixed terrain tire, made for comfort and performance when covering long miles on pavement, gravel, and forest service roads with a dash of single track. The tubeless ready Sparwood comes in a few different sizes and variations, my favorite being that 29 by 2.2 inch durable casing version. So, for more on the Sparwood, make sure to hit this card right here. I'll also find a link below. So I had the fortunate opportunity to test this limited edition Jaffe Shred Coat, which is an absolute stunning bike. But this review certainly applies equally to the standard Esker Jaffe as the geometry is the same. Steel is an exceptional material for crafting bicycles, especially when utilizing bike-specific chromoly that undergoes budding to reduce weight and enhance the riding experience. Steel boasts unparalleled durability and long-term fatigue resistance with the benefit of being repairable should any issues arise. What's intriguing is that while there are many custom frame builders out there, finding uh, more affordable steel framed production bikes can be quite a rarity. Esker, however, stands out with two notable options, the Hey Duke and the Jaffe. These two bikes have some similarities, such as the consistent reach across all frame sizes, a size-specific quad-butted 4130 chromoly tube set, boost spacing, and being designed around a 120 millimeter fork. That said, they're different in their intended purposes. The Hey Duke is a trusted choice with a versatile geometry featuring ample mounting points for bikepacking gear. On the other hand, Jaffe leans more towards trail riding, offering greater degree of playfulness, particularly when navigating single track. So let's delve into how these differences are achieved. All right, so I'm five feet, 9.5 inches or 1.77 meters tall, and I opted for the medium size frame. Now, Esker recommends medium bikes for riders between five, six, and six feet tall. While the medium size felt adequate, my longer arms tend to complicate sizing decisions, making me think a large frame might be suitable if necessary. Still, the medium overall reach of 450 millimeters worked really well for me, placing me in a comfortable position for all day rides. So the bike comes with this sloping top tube, which eliminates any concern about standover height, but slightly reduces the available frame storage space, something I will touch on shortly. So with a 120 millimeter fork, a 66 degree head tube angle, and a 1,171 millimeter wheelbase, which includes these 430 millimeter chainstays, the bike gains a well-balanced 741 millimeter front center. Coupled with this 76 degree seat tube angle, the geometry put me in an excellent neutral position, setting me up for obstacles. Except for the dropper post routing, the bike's cable and brake line routing are entirely external, a feature always appreciated as it's just way, way easier to service on the fly or even in your own shop. This model Jaffe is equipped with the new fixed universal derailleur hanger uh, portage dropout, but if you prefer a single speed setup or require more chainstay length, the adjustable portage dropout can easily be swapped in. It's worth noting that Esker plans to include the adjustable dropout with all new uh, bikes being shipped here in December. Additionally, the bike accommodates a 31.6 millimeter seat post, provides clearance for a 34 tooth or 32 tooth oval chainring, and has an impressive tire clearance ranging from 29 by 2.5 to 2.8 inches, depending on the dropout position. The frame also features a threaded bottom bracket and a 65 millimeter bottom bracket drop. During my experience with the medium frame, I encountered very few uh, issues related to crank arm interference with the 170 millimeter cranks. So the Jaffe strikes a great balance in its geometry. It's not overly aggressive like some super slacked out hardtails we've seen. And while even my preferences find me drooling over those bikes, 
I'm delighted the Jaffe found a spot in my garage this year. After spending several hundred miles pedaling this bike, it became clear that the Jaffe excels in multiple aspects. It's exhibited stability while tracking slow climbs on rough moto trails full of loose rocks, roots, and tight turns. The bike allowed me to kind of settle into a 20 minute climb without really worrying about my body position, a feat that's not always easily accomplished with a longer, more slacked out bike. The Jaffe also displayed impressive acceleration, particularly when I needed to kind of pick up speed for a challenging section of trail or when the urge to push the pace struck me. While the rear end did a good job of staying kind of planted on the terrain, uh, certainly better than some other hardtails I've ridden, occasional rattles or instances of traction loss or skidding still happen from time to time, but such is the case with hardtails. Somewhat related here is that I quickly realized that I preferred the Jaffe steel construction over say the aluminum uh, salsa timberjack or Santa Cruz chameleon. Um, which definitely has a more harsh ride quality in comparison to the steel Jaffe. Between the climbs and descents, the bike handled local streets or flat forest service roads with ease. It's certainly not the fastest or snappiest bike out there, but when I put down some power, the bike did a pretty good job of transferring those watts. So as the trail kind of trended downhill, the Jaffe demonstrated really good stability while maintaining a, I would say, respectable level of maneuverability. So when I pointed my front end from side to side to say avoid an obstacle, the steering would quickly yet still gracefully find uh, my desired destination. Smooth to moderately smooth single track posed no challenges for this bike. It remained compliant, comfortable, and predictable. However, when I encountered steep and rocky terrain littered with baby head size rocks, I had to certainly exercise a little bit more caution. Riding hardtails is inherently different from riding a full suspension bike. And I noticed this fact was all too clear when I pushed the Jaffe on terrain where I typically ride aggressively on my full suspension trail bike. Once I adjusted my approach and rode within its capabilities, it became enjoyable and no longer felt like a chore. This was the only instance where I actually found the bike to kind of behave this way. I fell in love with it during climbs, but had a slightly less favorable experience on some of my favorite trails up in the Cement Creek area north of Gunnison. But again, Esker understands this, and that's probably why they make full suspension bikes. If I had opted for the large frame, the extra 24 millimeters of wheelbase might have provided a bit more confidence, but it would likely come at the expense of climbing performance. And I was really impressed with the bike's overall climbing capabilities. This brings me back to the term balanced. It might be an overused word in bike reviews, but the Jaffe truly is balanced in more ways than one. I pedaled the bike through a wide range of terrain from punchy ascents to the steepest descents and everything in between. And it almost always offered a comfortable and reliable feel, which is crucial when spending five to six hours on the bike each day. And this leads me to bikepacking with the Jaffe. Loading up a bike adds a degree of compliance and the Jaffe is certainly no exception. When loaded, it displayed a more grounded and flexy feel, which was particularly beneficial for someone of my relatively light weight, helping me kind of avoid getting tossed around too much. It confidently handled challenging high alpine single track and high alpine mountain passes, and I could sense a bit more liveliness in the tube set. Even landing some small jumps and drops felt a little bit more gentle. As previously mentioned, the frame space, while not the largest, still provides ample storage for a significant amount of gear. I even had an older Oveja Negra frame bag from a Proudfoot bike fit the Jaffe, which was perfect. I made the most of the sloping top tube space uh, by adding a bottle on the top of the top tube, which definitely gave me more available storage. Speaking of storage, there are plenty of brazons on the frame, including two underneath the top tube for repair kits, two spots within the frame for bottles, and a set of three pack mounts on the underneath side of the down tube. 
So for my setup, I ended up using a Robert Axel Project Axel, which essentially functions as a rack mount, and it worked seamlessly even with the GX transmission. However, if you want to incorporate traditional rack mounts, you can actually easily do so by purchasing the Portage Dropout Rack Mount Bolt Kit. This kit allows you to essentially replace the top bolt on the Portage Dropout with one that has threaded rack mounts. And you can then use uh, something like the Salsa Rack Collar to complete the rack installation. I gotta say, no matter what bike it is, I'm really stuck on this rear rack kick right now because it allows full use of my dropper post, and in this case, 170 millimeters of dropper travel, allowing more body bike separation during technical climbs and descents. So this beautiful shred coat model was produced in limited quantities, so I'm not gonna discuss it too much, but I think there are a few noteworthy features I'd like to highlight. First and foremost, this fork is pretty darn awesome. This is the MRP Raven fork, which I hadn't previously used. It's a unique design featuring a negative and positive air chamber. This configuration notably enhanced that small bump sensitivity. So when I was going over washboards at relatively high speeds, it handled it really, really well and it was really comfortable. So the GX transmission on this bike left something to be desired. So despite setting it up correctly, I encountered an occasional odd hesitation, I guess, in shifting. Having tested four bikes with the new Eagle transmission before, this was the first time I experienced less than reliable shifting. Additionally, I found the new SRAM level brakes to be underwhelming. They didn't deliver much power and felt similar to the older SRAM brakes. During long descents, they exhibited signs of fading, uh, resulting in fatigue in my hands and fingers. So finally, I had used the Schwabi Nobby Nick Hans Dampf tires before, but not as a combo. I was reminded how great they were while riding the Jaffe. The 2.6 inch volume in particular was incredibly enjoyable. The big volume offers a bit more comfort and these tires provided excellent cornering grip, boosting my confidence. However, it's worth noting here that, yeah, they come with a lot of uh, noticeable rolling resistance, which uh, I guess maybe was a worthwhile trade-off. Wrapping things up here, I really appreciate the simplicity of a hardtail. And Esker showcases how distinct one can be from another with their Hey Duke and Jaffe models. The Jaffe in particular stands out by offering a more progressive ride that strikes a balance between stability and playfulness. It excels when loaded down and delivers excellent overall value. While occasionally I'd certainly wished for more fork travel and length, I also recognize that chasing a more specialized bike would compromise the balance and comfortable all-rounder that the Jaffe truly is. Esker crafted a versatile bike that excels in many aspects rather than just a few, making it a standout choice for a wide range of riding experiences, from quick after-work spins to week-long getaways. So the Jaffe frame set comes in at a starting price at $1,000, which I consider to be a pretty good value in today's market. Esker offers a range of build options, including single speed, GX, and XT builds, available in sizes small to extra, extra large. While some bikes are still in stock on their website, they have also opened orders for their upcoming batch of bikes scheduled to ship in December. So what do y'all think about the Esker Jaffe? Let me know in the comment section below. And if you like what you saw in this video and want to see more like it, please hit that subscribe button and notification bell. And if you want to help support all the work we do here at bikepacking.com, including in-depth routes, reviews, and all of our resources on our website, consider becoming a member of the Bikepacking Collective. More information can be found in the link in the top right corner. As always, thank you all so much for watching, and until next time, pedal further.